We're live. I want to thank Constitutional Stacker and Just Stack It, Matt, for doing the live today with me. It was good. Uh, maybe I should have had a guy that's been married for a long time that, you know, get that viewpoint of it because he would have probably said marriage is great. So anyway, it, it can be. It can be. But we're going to do these real quick. Uh, upsets today. Matter of fact, there's only one unbeaten team left in the men's division. That's Houston. Uh, James Madison got upset today, and uh, uh, Ole Miss got upset in the men's today. So, uh, Southern Southern Miss beat James Madison, which kind of was a shocker. And uh, I thought they had the best chance of any of them to go undefeated. It's over now. They won't. They'll drop like a rock in the polls. We had Creighton beating number 23 Providence, which really wasn't an upset because Providence lost one of their best players, so they're going to start losing now. They're going to drop like a rock. Uh, Seton Hall upsets number seven Marquette. That was pretty big. Mount St. Mary's. Uh, oh, wait a minute. That's wrong one. That's a prediction one. That's one, two, three. Oh, Charlotte beats number 17 Florida Atlantic, which does shock me there. Uh, all I can say, Florida, I looked at the stats. They, Florida didn't play terribly, but they still lost. Another, another one they lost that they played pretty well. Texas Tech beats um, number 20, Texas. Uh, Utah beat Colorado State. And Colorado State had a pretty good lead in that game. I think they was up 10 coming down the very end of the half, and uh, last half, and the other team came back and beat them. And uh, Cincinnati beat BYU, which – which is, what, number 12? I told you they was overranked. They shouldn't be ranked. So they're going to get beat a lot more times now. They're in their conference play. Now, predictions for the men on Sunday. I got Michigan State at Northwestern. Michigan State wins, uh, I think, by eight, somewhere in there. Maryland at Minnesota. I think Minnesota wins by six. SMU at Memphis. Memphis by 10. Uh, Massachusetts at Dayton. I got Dayton by 15. Michigan at Penn at Penn State, I got Penn by four. Uh, Niagara at Iona, I got Iona by five. Indiana State, which is having a great year, by the way. They got a better record than Indiana. They will play Northern Iowa at Northern Iowa. I got Indiana State by seven. That's where Larry Bird went to school, if you don't, if you want to remember that. Drake versus uh, Belmont, I got Drake by three. And then I've got Northern Kentucky at Cleveland State. I got Northern Kentucky by six. And then Mount St. Mary at St. Peter. I got St. Peter by four. And that's the men's. And we'll go. Uh, I don't have much time on my battery, so I'm hur hurrying up. Women's. We got, uh, wait a minute, round one. We got NC State undefeated at Virginia Tech. I got Virginia Tech upsetting NC State for NC State's first loss. And I think Virginia Tech will win by three. UK at Tennessee. Tennessee by 12. Mississippi State at South Carolina. You can forget it. South Carolina by 11, probably more the way they're playing. UConn at Georgetown, UConn by, by uh, 12. Colorado State, or Colorado, sorry. Colorado at Arizona State, I got Colorado by 8. IU plays tomorrow at Nebraska. Not an easy game. You know, Nebraska it can be tough, but I got IU by 10. Utah at Arizona. Utah's outstanding team. I got uh, Utah by 13. LSU at Ole Miss. Now, there could be an upset. Ole Miss is pretty good, and they're really good at home. But I'm going to take LSU by three. But I may regret that. If there's an upset, it wouldn't surprise me. Oregon at USC. You can forget it. USC by 15. And Oregon State at UCLA. You can forget it because UCLA will win that by 20 or more. So, there's the predictions. Now, we're going to go to the IU game and go over the statistics. They played Ohio State today, the men. And uh, here it is. I'm going to show you what kept Ohio State in the game, if I can if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this or not. I don't think it's going to show up good. I can't see what it's doing, so... I hope that shows it, and I'm just going to show you. As you see right here, I guess that'll do it. Two players had decent games. He did, he did have a few with nine, but here it is. This is what killed Ohio State. 14 turnovers. They did have one heck of a game blocking the ball, so 
that helped keep them in the game. They only had three steals. They had nine, usually it's the other way around, three steals, nine, uh, nine steals, three blocks. But you see what they did here. 13 assists is not terrible. They had 49 rebounds, which was just completely outstanding. And that's what did it. By the way, that's what kept them in the game. Any able to blow them out, except for the 49 rebounds and the nine block shots. That's what kept them in. And 20 set, or 22 of them were offensive rebounds, which gave them a lot of extra shots. So I'm going, you can't give up 20. Any it was very lucky to win that game because they owned it gave up that many offensive rebounds. Free throws. Indiana did a good job on defense keeping them off the line. They only had nine attempts, but they did shoot 89%. They did a lot better with the threes in the second half. I think the first half they only hit one, and but only 26%. And that was um, a big improvement. And that, that kept them in the game too, so to speak. But overall, they shot 36%, and that's pathetic. But they got 69 shots. And why you get 69 shots? Because you got 22 offensive rebounds. And that and the 49 overall rebound. That's why I tell you rebounding is so important. Because and especially offensively, because look how many you get them all these and they scored a lot of points off these. And outstanding with the defense on inside and in the interior by nine. So we now look at Indiana. So Indiana was lucky to win this. They shot a pretty good percentage, 47%. That's pretty good. You know, when you're 45 or more, you generally have a good chance of winning. But and they shot 42% from three, which is higher than normal for Indiana. So they did good there. And they actually shot 75% from the free throw line. They got 16 attempts. So that was pretty good. I mean, that's good for Indiana, 75. Uh, offensive rebounds, only seven. 27 total. So there you got your parity. 49 for them, 27 for Indiana. Most of the time you lose with that big of an advantage rebound wise, almost two to one. Uh, they did get 16 assists, which is pretty good. Eight steals, which is not bad. Only three blocks. And that's terrible for Indiana because they've got leapers. They've got seven footers. They've got big guys inside turnovers. though. look at this stat. Only four. That's the best Indiana's done all year. And that's another thing that helped them. If they turn the ball over, 11 or 12 times, Ohio State wins. There's no doubt about it. There's just no doubt about it. Um, so they won 71-65. So they, there's a lot of ways to win in basketball. There's no doubt about it. But at Indiana, lets a team have 22 offensive rebounds, they're going to lose 9 out of 10 times on the game on that. That alone, 9 blocks when you add that onto it. And almost 50 rebounds for them. That's just terrible. But what happened was, and let's go back up and show you what they scored here. You got Renew, who scored 23. He had an outstanding game. 23, seven rebounds. Only turned it over once, and that was questionable. They called a travel on him. And that, because I got to watch it, but that's outstanding, you know, a ball game. He has a great soft shot. Uh, here's where they hurt. Mabako and Ware only had between them 13 points. They have to contribute more in there. Uh, Ware didn't play all that much, really. I, I don't. They don't have the minutes here, but he didn't play all that much. He might have gotten foul trouble. I'm not for sure why they took him out. Bacco, he got in <laughs> and turned the ball over. He only had one, but he didn't play much today, and he only got five shots off. So, you know, they put him in. He turns it over. He took him right back out. And Callaway, what happened to him? He's got to perform better than this, especially at home. But Johnson – Came back with probably maybe his best game of the year so far. And Johnson, 8 of 11 free throws, but he one was an air ball. And he actually didn't shoot his percentage. He shoots 80%. He shot 72 today. He was 2 of 2 from 3. That means he needs to take more. And he was 4 of 9 field goals. So that's good shooting. So the problem with him, he's not being assertive enough. And he's trying not to be a hog. And he's trying to be a team player. I understand all that. But he needs to be a little bit more greedy. He needs to take more shots, and it's it, you know I don't know how you tell him that, but he needs to. Now he needs to take good shots, but he needs if he's open, he needs to shoot. He could hit six threes a game. I'm convinced of it. Uh, he could be scoring 25 points a game, average 24, 25 points. He's quicker than anybody he plays. He just blew by some people today and went in and laid it in. I go, why didn't you doing that all year? You you're faster and quicker with the ball than most players he plays. 
Why he doesn't score 25 points a game, I don't know. He must. It'll be, if Indiana does anything in the tournament, it's going to be because of Xavier Johnson. And if he's going to be a, a passive, I don't want the ball on my shoulders. I don't want to be the man. Like Ric Flair said, to be the man, you got to be the man or whatever they're saying. If he don't want to do that, Indiana's going nowhere this year. They, they're they pretty decent inside for how young they are. But he's got to be the, a perimeter. They need him on the perimeter. C.J. Gunn had his best game of the year so far with 10. Had a steal. He usually gets rebounds. He didn't. Uh, he did really well off the bench for them, and I was impressed. I mean, he did really well. This is the best game he's had so far. So maybe now they're going to get consistent scoring out of him, and that's going to take pressure from some of the other players. But, again, Johnson is the key. You can see how well a game he had. He should, he should do that every night. But he, you look at him, he's like, I'm not sure. I don't know. You ought to know by your fifth, five, fifth and a half year what to do, how to do it, and take it to it. He needs to be a leader. And you just don't see it. If he should do this better than he should do better than this every game. If he comes to life and really gets going, starts averaging about 20 points a game, I think Indiana will will do well. Maybe even upset Purdue. But Johnson will have to have a good game to beat Purdue. About all these guys are going to have to. They're going to need probably six players in double figures if they're going to beat Purdue. And they beat Purdue bo both times last year. And really, they had a really great inside player, but they didn't have a bunch of good inside players last year. So anyway, that's the breakdown of that game. And Indiana was very fortunate to, to win. Again, dope, two to one uh, rebounding, 22 to seven on offensive rebounds. They're very fortunate to win that game. And uh, that's about all I can say about that. They were very fortunate. I mean, there's games you you probably win you shouldn't, and this might be a go down as one of them. They did shoot well. I'll give them credit for that. But overall, but – and they had a really – I think they really shot well the second half, a lot better. So they had a really good second half. But they'll give you a heart attack. <laughs> and I, I was going, I don't know if I need to watch this. I better turn over to something else. It was Because Ohio State kept coming back. They got a 10-point lead, and Ohio State just kept coming back on them. So, anyway, Indiana now is 3-1 in the conference. They're tied for second. And um, we'll see. If they can stay in the top three, fine and dandy. They're not going to win the league. I mean, nobody thought they would. Uh, I think everybody thought the best they could finish was second. And if they can finish second or third, I would consider that a excellent year for for all these new players that came in. So, what's my battery look like? Woo! Getting down there. So that's it. I just wanted to go ahead and do this for tomorrow's games. Uh, the women, bunch of ranked teams play tomorrow. Saturday's the game, the main game day for men. Sunday's the for women, and we will see what happens and. I'll see how I do. I, there's a lot of games in the men I didn't really want to call, but I had to come up with 10. So I don't know those teams as well. So it's kind of a guess. But I see how many home – I got, what, one, two, three, four teams winning at on the from on, on the road wins, and the rest are home wins. So we'll see what happens. So keep stacking, keep packing because of the times we live in. And if you didn't check out the, the live I did earlier, you might want to do it. It's a little long. It went a little over two hours. Uh, I didn't know Sal was going to be on. That was a, he popped up. I didn't. I almost always watch his uh, there to watch his lies. He popped up with it, and I go, "Wow!" You know, I didn't. I didn't expect that. So I missed that, and uh, I went back and watched it later. So anyway, uh, but I think if we reference to Sal's, I'm not. I don't think so much it's going to affect the price of silver weapons and building weaponry and all. I think platinum. I think platinum would be to the plus better than silver, if you ask me. Because there's certain weapons, I think, that they do use platinum in. And I think they have to have a decent amount. You know, you have a lot of silver, it's not that high. You, you, if you got to use quite a bit of platinum, then you're talking money. So, anyway, it just seems like to me that that's the case. And I think $1.50's in here now. I see a, a picture, cut. I mean, a, 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 one person watching, one like. So, I'm assuming that's him. So, anyway, I'm going to let you go. Keep stacking, keep packing, because time to live in. And I'll see you soon.